Okay, well, my name's Randy, and I want to welcome everyone to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures. In this video, uh, I'm going to go over, I'm going to make a lure. Um, it's not going to be the shad style lures that you guys have seen on previous videos. It's going to be something a little different. It's going to be based on a lure that um, I hastily made on Saturday for a trip that my friend John from Musky Mates made out um, to St. Clair Sunday and Monday, where we ended up hooking a few muskies. But uh, the precursor to all of that is uh, my dad arranged a trip last year to Lake St. Clair for a charter trip for Muskie. And on um, that trip, unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate, so we weren't able to go on the charter. Um, we went this year, and we ended up uh, going with um, a, comp a charter boat called Get Hooked Sport Fishing. Here's their Facebook page. Uh, the captain's name is Frank Beals. And I'll tell you what, you know, we may not have hooked any muskie that trip. Um, the fish didn't cooperate. He allowed me to run a lot of my baits, which was awesome. And really, I thank him for that. Uh, and whatever um, advice or um, uh, whatever they did looking at the lures and everything like that, um, their critique of it. Um, Unfortunately, like I said, we didn't we didn't get any muskie. You guys saw the video where the pike was caught on one of my shorts. That was caught in the middle of a storm, which was approaching a major. So we had a weather front coming in, major approaching, which seemed really awesome. We're going to catch it. You know, plan on I think we were going to catch a muskie. You know, you just have that gut feeling. But unfortunately, we didn't get one. Um, we got a lot of we got a couple walleye, and we got some really huge monster smallmouth bass, and then that pike. And you know what? Like I said, all we didn't catch any muskie. Um, the trip was awesome. Captain Beals provided a great day. Lots of awesome memories that my family and I will be talking about for years to come. So let's fast forward. I, we were trolling. Um, I paid attention to what they were doing. Asked a lot of questions. I learned a lot about the lake. Um, and learned about a lot of different things with trolling techniques and things like that. Even though they were using things at a much larger scale. I scaled it all down for my size of my boat and two people on a boat. So my friend John and I from Muskie Mates went out and did some uh, musky fishing. Uh, we got a musky. Uh, so I'll put the picture up. Hopefully you guys can see the picture right here. Um, and um, that was our third fish for the day. Sunday night, Sunday we got one on this custom lure I hastily made on Saturday. Um, we got another one on a, on a Jake. Monday morning and then Monday afternoon before we were getting ready to leave which was probably the last spot we hit We ended up getting this really nice probably 40 plus inch um, Great Lakes spotted muskie on this hastily made uh, Crankbait that I made for trolling Anyways, we saw a lot of perch um, On the bottom on our sonar the fish were not looking at any shad baits that we threw out It didn't matter what it was if it were shad profile, they didn't look at it. They didn't want it. Um, they wanted all these nice, long, minnow, perch style, profile type baits. So here's a lure that caught them all. And this is what we're going to make right here. So it's a through wire, cedar wood, through wire, uh, 45 degree lip. I made it really small, square lip. I didn't want it diving deep because we were going to probably put this on one of our boat rods and it was going to go down with a sinker and go down anyways. So um, I hastily put this together really quick, um, didn't put a lot of time into it, but it got two fish. So we're going to make something like this. And um, at first this tie-in point here was pointing straight out, lure didn't swim at all. Uh, we got rid of it, we put it away, we weren't planning on using it at all. But as we're trolling, and when you get when you're trolling and nothing's hitting, you kind of bored, so you start looking for things to do. And I took a pair of pliers and I started bending the nose down a little bit, so that way we would push it down like this. And lo and behold, the, the lure started swimming. I went down to an extreme angle. It swam really nice, and we put it on the spread. And shortly after we did that, we ended up getting our first fish. And we ended up. Trolling this all day Sunday, all day Monday, and at the end of the day, we finally got a second fish with it. And it seemed everything on that day, that everything was biting on blue. Okay, so we're going to make this lure, and I'm going to go over it and everything, so let's get started, okay? Uh, the painting we're going to do is going to be a Tennessee shaft. 
Okay, so I've got the piece of cedar, and now I'm going to take this over to um, our table saw and put this in the jig, and we're going to get the diving lip slot cut. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to use our sliding jig here. We're going to cut our diving lip out. We're going to take our time, and we're going to just bring this light up on our slowly until we get a nice uh, angle kind of looked up here. Okay, there we go. There's our diving lip slot. Okay, well, I got the diving lip all, slide all cut. I've already made a template for the lure. This is our example. Okay, so there's the lure cut out. There's the profile, looks pretty similar, and let's go get this cut out on the bandsaw. Let's get this stuff cut out first. Okay, and there we go. So next, we're gonna get all this sanded down, right down to the blue line. All right, so let's get this sanded. And there's the lure there. So now I wanna get, um, mark my center, chamfer lines, eye socket, and then we're going to um, get everything drilled out, and then we're going to start carving. Okay, well, um, I've got the eye sockets drilled out. I've got my chamfer lines all drawn out. My road map is drawn out here. So this is what we're going to use to drill our through wire. That's our guide. I've got a hook hanger hole drilled. I've got our lead hole drilled. Another hook hanger. And this is just a guide, so when I'm drilling with the drill bit through here, I can see it coming through and knowing exact that I'm going exactly through the center. Okay, so now it's going to be time to drill our through wire hole, and that's going to take some time. So um, join in, and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take the small drill bit, and we're going to insert it, and we're going to drill through this center line that we have along the road map that's on the other side through these holes. And then I'm going to try, if I can get it through this one, I'm going to take a longer drill bit and they're um, quarter inch drill bits that we're going to use for the long one. And then we're going to go here and we're going to keep drilling through and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger because we're going to take our wire, we're going to do a loop and then we're going to do a few uh, loops around that and then we'll get that fit inside. Okay. So let's get started here. And this so we're kind of go veering off a little bit. So we wanna so we veered off a little bit. And we punched it right through the middle. There we go. So let's show you guys that. I don't know if you guys can see that there. But we punched it right through the middle. Okay, here's our longer drill bit. And that's going to go all the way to here. And then we're going to use our shorter drill bit. Same thing here. And then we'll flip this around and we'll do the same thing. Over here. And they should meet somewhere in the middle.
Gonna go right before. Okay, and now we're gonna do this side, same way. Here's our roadmap right here, if you guys can see that. I'll show you. Okay, so right uh, there is our, our drill point right there. And we're gonna try to go right along that line. And the plan is to have this wire go all the way through the diving lip, and then it goes all the way through. So once this is done drilling, before we put the wire in, we're gonna have to get the diving lip cut and everything like that and get that glued in. Okay, so let's get started on this final hole so we can get everything cut and sand. Looks like we're dead center. Right through the middle. Awesome. Okay. So the through wire hole is drilled. And now we're going to start carving our chamfer lines and getting everything sanded down smooth. So here we go. Got to try to figure out how to do this around the camera. All right. So let's, start, let's get started. So we're going to do it in between this line and that line right there. You might get some tear out. If you do, you can always go the opposite way. I'm not too concerned about the tear out because we're, I'm going to get all that sanded off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I still got to cut the grass. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to, then when I'm sanding these, I will go from the center down to that line here, to our chamfer line on the body, and that will all get smoothed out, okay? We'll do that on this whole side and this whole side and all on the bottom. So, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so finally we've got everything all sanded out. And it looks really good. Nice and smooth. So I think our sealer will go on. We'll put a couple coats of sealant on it. Then we'll put a primer coat on. And then we'll epoxy over that. And um, then we'll start painting. So let's get this diving lip done first. So I made a template out already. And we're going to get that traced out on our Lexan. Um, ignore this. It's not 3 30 seconds. It's 8th inch. If you guys are wondering, if you're following along and you want to make lures, it's eighth inch because that's what the kerf is on my table saw. So we're just going to trace this out, our pen. Now 
the next one we're going to do, we're going to do two of them. Um, it's going to have a round lip. Okay, so there's our diving lip already drawn out. So we're going to get that cut out on the bandsaw, get it all sanded down nice and smooth, polish the edges, and uh, we'll see how it fits. So we're going to get this cut on the bandsaw right now. Oh, we're gonna go get this sanded smooth and then I'll do a lot of polishing off camera because it's a lot of work. Okay, now it's time to start sanding these edges smooth, we'll get it all polished. So we're gonna do all that off camera. Okay, so let's see, what did we do here? We or let's see, what did I do here? I did um, all the sanding, got all the holes drilled out. We're going to have a hook hanger here. Lead weight goes here, another hook hanger. This was just a hole to guide me when I was drilling through. Um, I got the lip pinned. We got two pins in. I've got the holes drilled out. We've got the eye sockets drilled out. And I put a coat of finish on. So that, now it's time to do the through wire. And I've already got the through wire straightened out. Here's the wire that I used. By the way, if you guys want to buy it, um, here's the brand. Got it on Amazon. And that's the thickness of the wire. Okay. So now, as you can see, the wire is going to go through. Just like that and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make a loop here a line tie and I'm just gonna bend it down just like that I'm gonna bend it down and it's gonna kind of look like this because that's what we were going for remember this one I had all the way up here going straight and I bent it down did some repairs on it and we got it to work and I'll probably end up putting a, a split ring on it too all right so let's get started on that and I'll show you guys how I do that and then what I'll do is I'll show you guys, there's our line tie. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is we are going to slide this through our lure, through the lure body. Okay. And we are going to eventually try to get this in here, like so. Okay, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bend this down a little bit more. So it's just about like that. And if you can see, that is how our lure is here. Okay. Good. So we got that part done. And then we can make sure we have all of this lined up here. Um, okay, I think that's good. All right, next we're going to make our hook hangers. All right, then we're going to bend this. We're going to bend this. I like making some of these loops a little bit bigger. Okay, just like that. Then we're going to Bring it in here and here. And the best thing, what we do now, what I do now is I'm going to measure, see how far down that goes right there. Okay. Then I take a pair of hemostats or pliers, whatever you want to use. I like hemostats because they usually stay pretty still. And we're well below that, so I'm going to go to about there. Let's see. And if you want to really check it, you can pull this out. Okay. And then you can slide this in here like so. Put that in. And we're kind of high. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit more. Okay, well, 
I've got it all done here. It's been sanded. Fin um, I put sealant on it. Got it all taped up. Tested, casted it. And now we're going to get ready to paint it. Okay, here we go. I'm do some painting now. This is just a gray primer. Okay. And now I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll start uh, actually painting the color of the lure. So the first color for our Tennessee Shad is going to be pearl white. And that's going to be the entire body. And then we'll bring olive down here and then we'll do the scales too. So let's get started here. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. We're gonna fill this up again. Okay, so here's our pearl white. Next, it looks like the next color is going to be, I'm thinking a pearl lime green, maybe. Um, across the top, maybe down here, faded in. Okay, well, I don't have a whole lot left of this, but this is going to be pearl lime green. But we're going to do this pretty light. Okay, and here we go. So we're just going to do this across the top. And I kind of want it just to sit right about here. So we're going to cross the top really light. There, just like that. And I'm going to come across the sides. Like so. Just like that. I'm going to come down a little bit more. There. I think that works just like that. We're going to go across the front here a little bit. Across the head. There. There we go. And it kind of looks like that pearl fades into the green or the green fades into the pearl. Okay, next is gonna be, I'm gonna go with an olive across the top and then black after that. We're gonna try a new color. I got these off of Amazon a while ago. Um, this is called Dragon Flash by a Beer Iridescent Acrylic Colors. Uh, this is pretty thick, so we're gonna have to thin it out quite a bit. So I want this to go on super light. Okay. Okay, so this one's just going to go right across the top, and I'm going to try to let it fall across here. There we go. Okay, so the next color before we do the scales is going to be a Wicked Opaque Jet Black and that is going to go right down the top.
Okay, so next we're going to wrap some scales on this and get the scales painted. Okay, so we got the scales on and the plan is to use a pearl satin gold and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all over the top really heavy and try to fade that in down here and that will kind of hopefully blend all of this in. Okay, so the first few passes are going to be pretty heavy across the top. And here we go. And I think that'll do it for the scales. I think so. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this off. And then I'll probably go over the top of this with black. Just to kind of blend it all together. So let's see what these scales look like. I'm kind of anxious to see what they look like here. Here we go. I'm going to be very gentle with this taking it off we knew we were gonna to have to paint the bottom again so that's what we'll do with that this looks pretty good I kind of like it oh heck yeah that is yep now that is what we were looking for right there I think that looks pretty darn good You know, I don't think I'm going to put, maybe we'll do a quick, really short stripe of black down the top, but I don't know if I really want to. I kind of like this. So let's just leave it. We'll come over this in black, do the eyes in black again, and then we'll get our uh, gills and things started for another day. I, I like that. I like that a lot. I, this is looking really good. And I think the person I'm going to make, I'm making this for is going to really like it as well. And now it's time to do some detail work on this lure. Time to do some gills. And maybe we'll do some deets. And you know, I was just looking on my analytics and noticed I have 619 subscribers, which is awesome. And, you know, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for taking the time to watch my videos taking the time to like them, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff and give me input on how my videos come out. So with that said, on, the, on that note, we're going to get started on um, actually doing some paintwork, some detail. Here we go. There, and there's our gill. Okay, and there we go, there's our gills. We're not done with that yet. Now we gotta put in some white. But I think that looks pretty good. I like that a lot. Okay, moving on. Okay, so continuing on with the theme of the gills, we're going to do the inside right about here with um, some wicked opaque white. This just lightens it up a little bit. 
There. And we got a nice little line right there. Okay. Now we have a decision to make. Now we have a decision to make. Do I want to continue with the head and adding, see what stencils I have. And adding some stencils to it to give it a little bit of life in the gill so it's just not so blah. And if we do that, what color do we, how do we want to paint it? I kind of like it like this. And we can finish this in, in regular opaque white and then add some red for some bleeding. But I was thinking of maybe adding a little bit of, I don't have the right stencil, so we'll have to get some different stencils. So we're going to forget about that. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to paint all of this in opaque white. This will take more than one coat. So now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start painting like this little bloody area over here. I'm going to put a little bit there. Um, maybe some coming up the gills up this way. And we're going to use a transparent bright red. There. I think that looks pretty darn good. So we're going to call that detail work complete. We're going to get that heat set. And the very final step in this paint process, other than me signing it, is going to be putting our shad dot right in the middle about there. Spread nice and light. Oh, too much. There. Done. Okay, now the fun part is getting this on the other side the same. And I want to make sure this is dry. Okay, good. So I think we went about here, right? Right about, it looks like right about, not way down there. We want it up at the transition point, right about there. I'm going to go on a limb and say that's probably our spot right there. I think that looks like it. Oh, we want, we want to go this way. That's right. So that way we had something to measure off of. There. It's like, I think like that. Okay. Get our black. We'll spray. Ever so gently. There we go. There's our shad dot. Cool. I'm pretty impressed. I like that. So the final, final piece before signing, before our first bit of epoxy, is we want to put the eyes in. So we're just ever so small, such a small, small drop of super glue. Uh, too much. It's all right. Okay. So I'm going to take the utmost care doing this. We don't want to mess this up because we're doing so awesome on this lure right now. We do not want to mess this up. So we are just drop it in. And that super glue will hold it in place just like that. There we go. Our Tennessee Shad is almost finished. 
Okay, so we've got the epoxy all mixed with our one-to-one -one mixture. Uh, I'm going to put some gold glitter in there so we can add some flesh to the lure. Not a lot, just a little bit. That's probably enough. We just want a hint of glitter, not a ton of it. So we don't want to overpower it. Okay, so like I said, just a hint of glitter. We're going with gold. Okay. And now it's time to put some finish on this. This has got to be, I am like super excited about this lure. It is probably one of the best ones I've ever made. It's got to be, at least finish wise, everything. Except for maybe the diving lip, but we'll get that. We'll get that. Now the big issue I've been having with this epoxy is I think we've had way too much humidity recently, especially in the garage, um, that the epoxy just did not want to adhere to itself. Actually, it would separate no matter what I did. Today it seems like it's sticking, sticking together pretty good. Going pretty light, not going real heavy on this one. But as you can see, there's just a hint of glitter on there, which is what we want. And it's just amazing how everything just pops once you put the epoxy on. It's just awesome. Look at that. Look at how that gold just comes right out. Right there, just like that. And then the red. Uh, I love this lure. I don't think I could give this away. Honestly, I don't think I can. I like this lure way too much. I really do. Great thing is I have the template. I know how it's made. I have the original. I can make another one. I can make many. Kind of feel like Bob Ross painting epoxy on, on the lure. This is great. Wow. You know the charter captain I'm making this for? I can't wait for him to see this. Can't wait for him to put it in his trolling spread. Hear about it catching a big muskie. Honestly, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear that news. Okay. I'm going to put some more on here. Right in here. there. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
So that's that. There we go. This is the lure. If you guys can think of a name for this, I will start using it with names I like. So put your, what you think the name of this lure should be in the comments. And I will um, start looking into how I'm going to name it or what I'm going to name it. Most likely will be the one that you guys recommend. And since I'm getting right up there close to a thousand subscribers, when I hit a thousand subscribers, we'll do another lure video and I will raffle off a lure to my one, whoever's going to be my 1000 subscriber and make a comment in the video when you are my 1000 subscriber and I will send you a lure that I make on video that lure okay so let's see if we can aim for 1000 subscribers and I can get you guys on a video or get you guys a lure that's on one of my videos okay awesome there we go we're gonna put this on rotisserie and let it sit overnight Shot of it to the glare. I see. I well, I can see the video on the video screen. I can see it. Oh, this is actually. No, it just came off. Oh. Let's <laughs> get off. 